Well, welcome everybody to our Xamarin University guest lecture. Uh, I'm Rob Gibbons, I'm a trainer here at Xamarin University. And today I'm very happy to welcome uh, Martin Van Dyke coming to us from the Netherlands to show us how to build cross-platform apps using Xamarin and the MVVM cross framework. I've really been trying to get an MVVM cross guest lecture here for a while. I'm really excited that he's here. Martin is a Xamarin MVP. He'll be a presenter at Xamarin Evolve in just about five weeks. And most importantly today, Martin is one of the core contributors to MVVM Cross. So thank you so much for being here with us, Martin, and you can now take it away. Yes, thank you for having me. And I'm glad I can present the MVVM Cross framework here on Xamarin University. Uh, I really hope that everybody uh, gets to learn uh, how to build cross-platform apps with MVVM Cross today. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, glad that we can start now. So, um, let's start off with uh, myself. Uh, as uh, you just said, I'm Martin van Dijk, and uh, I've been developing uh, Xamarin apps for over two years now. And when I first started, I was wondering um, what framework should I use for, MV, uh, for Xamarin? And by that time, Xamarin Forms wasn't the, is as big as it is today. So I started investigating MVVM Cross, and uh, very quickly I got involved into the, the development of it, uh, which is very interesting. It was uh, one of the first open source projects I was involved with, and uh, I've learned a great deal of stuff from it. So if you want to um, contact me, you can contact me via Twitter, email, GitHub, or speaker deck. Check out my slides after this presentation. Uh, I'll be happy to help you afterwards, too. So let's uh, start with uh, where I work. I work at uh, Xablu. It's a company in the Netherlands uh, where uh, we do Xamarin-only uh, projects. So uh, we do uh, mostly uh, Xamarin and MVVM cross work, some other projects too. And uh, we think that it's really important to, to build and focus on this kind of uh, apps. So. Let's start off with the history of MVVM Cross. And uh, people might wonder where do it, does it even come from? Hey, Martin. Uh, Martin sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure we're having a little bit of audio trouble for some of the uh, attendees. If anybody's having audio trouble, it sounds OK to me. So let me know using the GoToWebinar chat panel, and we'll see if we can do that. Uh, so it looks like it's OK for most people. If you are having audio problems, uh, I suggest switching from your mic and speaker to the telephone and then back to the mic, or, mic and speaker. So, okay, just want to interrupt that. Sorry about that. You can go on. No problem. So when we look at the history of MVVM Cross, um, we start off by the guy starting the project, Stuart Lodge. Uh, he's a guy from England, and he started off uh, MVVM Cross as the fork of Monocross, which is an MVZ framework. And that was in 2012. Um, so he started this uh, as a brand new project, uh, actually in MVVM instead of MVC, but based on Monocross. Um, Stuart has done a great deal of development uh, on MVVM Cross over the past years. And uh, yeah, he was uh, involved until recently pretty heavy, and uh, we've taken over now with Thomas Zelensky, or slash Cheese Baron, and me, um, and many others. So we help to manage and bring this project forward uh, even more uh, by uh, collaborating together. So when we look at the timeline of things happening on MVVM Cross, we can see that uh, after the main framework was created from 2012 to 2014, we started off adding support for different uh, or separate frameworks uh, within the Xamarin infrastructure to MVVM Cross. So first thing we did was adding support for Android support libraries. Uh, probably most people here are known to them. Uh, you can think of, for example, the AppCompat support library, uh, the other libraries like uh, V4, uh, V7, and uh, later on the V13 and 17. Um, after we did that, we added support for Xamarin Forms too, uh, 
uh, as camera phones is uh, getting traction now, it's really popular, and, and we wanted to add support for that and um, uh, yeah, enable camera phone users to use the power of MVVM Cross. Another thing what we did was adding a, a proper plugin structure, and we did that at the end of 2015. Uh, really made the plugins part of the infrastructure within GitHub. Uh, which also enables us to automatically build and deploy them. The last thing what we recently did was adding iOS support, uh, which is not really something uh, uh, native or of iOS. It's more an add-on to the iOS framework, the iOS um, Xamarin framework, and uh, we have added things like uh, site menu, Xamarin, iOS helpers, that kind of stuff. So, and we're planning even more for the future. So, it's a really stable and uh, framework that has been in development for a couple of years. So, I can think that it's safe to say that you can rely on the development of MVVM Cross. One other thing we also want to do in the future, and what we're working on right now, is to add uh, support for Xamarin.Apple, which is a thing recently introduced by Xamarin. Um, it's PCL uh, support for iOS, uh, iWatch, that kind of products, all the products of app actually. And we're working on uh, using bait and switch for plug plugins. So let's talk about MVVM Cross. Why would you need, need MVVM Cross and what do you use it for? Well, there are a couple of things that I want to point out. Of course, it's cross-platform, and uh, it's really awesome to use if you want to make native applications which still share a great deal of code. And what we actually do in our applications we're developing here in our uh, company is that we can, uh, by using MVVM Rust, we can achieve uh, over 80% of code sharing. And that's really cross-platform. What we also have in MVVM Cross is support for all major platforms. And then com coming back to that in uh, the next slides. MVVM Cross is one of the most uh, extensive and, and, and advanced MVVM libraries for Xamarin and .NET, uh, and which is uh, good, of course, because it enables you to uh, develop for all the platforms and use all the tools you need uh, in developing apps. When you look at the community involved in MVVM Cross, you can say that it has grown uh, quite a lot over the past time. We have over 100 contributors on MVVM Cross, and uh, even more when you look at the issues and, and pull requests coming into uh, the re repository, which is great. I'm really thankful for all the people which are helping out. And w what you see is that it doesn't mean that you know, like oh, when you contribute to MVVM Cross, it's also that you're getting back uh, because we, we integrate it into the framework, release um, new updates, and you're helping the others too. So together with the whole community, we are like a really stable and uh, good uh, GitHub project, I think. Because uh, me and t are now so involved with this project, we also have a fast release cycle. We bring out updates to the NEGAT, uh, I think, yeah, at least once a month. And uh, this really enables us to uh, yeah, release uh, bug fixes and uh, updates to the platform uh, fast. MVVM Cross is also a really clean and uh, easy framework to use. And um, we have just recently with uh, 4.0, we've started off with uh, cleaning up the namespaces, cleaning up the files. So it should be really clear to you how to use it now. And I'm going to demonstrate that uh, in the next few slides. So when you look at what uh, companies already use uh, MVVM Cross in their development, you can see that there is, well, some big companies which are using it. And uh, those are only six. And uh, I think over the whole world, there are a lot more using it. Uh, for example, Microsoft, uh, the Dutch government, Nokia Xamarin itself uses it for some development, and some other companies too. And that's really great, I think. Um, 
So I spoke to uh, those two guys here uh, some time ago, and for example, Mikael de Iglasa, CTO of Xamarin, says that he loves MVVM Cross and the community involved in it. And the same is actually for Scott Hanselman, the Microsoft, Microsoft developer evangelist, uh, which is really impressed with MVVM Cross. I met with him a uh, while ago in uh, Norway and uh, the chat. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that's really great that such uh, big names in the industry uh, like the framework and uh, use it in their companies. And a funny fact actually is that uh, when Microsoft introduced the UWP framework at Build 2015, they used MVVM Cross at the live demo to, uh, to show it. Uh, yeah, that's something I'm really proud of and uh, it was really cool that they did that. I didn't know it up front. So let's have a look at MVVM. Uh, probably you guys uh, know some frameworks around. You have MVC, you have MVVM, uh, well, there are a couple of others too. But what makes MVVM so good as uh, I think it is? You have here uh, a view with um, a button and text, and the separation you see between these layers makes it actually uh, the good thing, the, the, what makes it so great. So when I have this button here in the view, it can fire off an action which gets handled by the event handler, uh, which is a binder, and it's uh, some kind of magic happening there. Uh, it fires off a command to the view model. Uh, in the view model, you can lot of, do a lot of stuff. Uh, you can get some data from your API. You can do some uh, business logic, uh, or access your models. And if you have done that, you can go back to your view by doing a property change, which will uh, be fired off by the binder and your text box, for example, get updated by data you got from the view model or an API. So it's a really clean separation of all the logic you have in your app. And what you see if you're using MVVM Cross Native, you see that you separate the view from the uh, view model in your logic. And uh, the view is platform specific, while the view model and the models are shared across platforms. Uh, other techniques in MVVM could be, for example, file linking, uh, shared code projects where you use the if and end if, or portable class libraries. And uh, MVVM Cross itself is, of course, built on portable class libraries. So that, that's like obvious thing. So what does MVVM Cross support? Uh, well, the major platforms are all supported. You have Android, you have iOS, Windows, even Xamarin Forms and Mac. Um, but it isn't limited to that. As I said, we added support for the Android support libraries. And uh, if you look at Windows, there's a lot more supported in there than, uh, than you might see. So Silverlight, Console, UWP, or WPF is all supported. And uh, Xamarin Forms also uh, helps you with the views, so you can still share your view uh, code uh, while using the MVVM cross view models. So MVVM cross itself, the, the code itself, is based on a flexible architecture. It's all PCL based, so it's um, possible to use these packages in all the platforms you want. Um, out of the box, there's support for inversion of control, dependency injection, value converters, bindings, and it is really testable. And of course, we have the great plugin infrastructure. And I'm coming back to this uh, in the next few slides. So if you want to know more about MVVM Plus, I was starting looking into it. Um, it's really good that you know what resources you can use. And uh, I'm just going to yeah, lower my screen slides a bit. Let me just see and share some resources with you. Uh, so when we first take a look at the brand new MVVM Cross websites, which we launched for the uh, 4.0 release, you can see there's a blog documentation. You can search uh, their versions here where you can all track down the changes done to the documentation per version. So this is a really great system for finding help and uh, finding uh, yeah, 
like documentation on your project. And if we look at the documentation here, you see there's a lot of topics covered already. So if we just take a look here, see it's all described, what it does, uh, how to use it. And if you want more information, you should go first to mvvmcross.com to find it. So if you've done that and you didn't find the answer you were searching for, you can come to Slack, Stack Overflow, Xamarin Forum, Forums, uh, or one of the other preferred uh, yeah, channels you want. So if we just take a quick look at the GitHub website, you see um, there's the issues, the pull requests, and if you have any problem, you can just open an issue and fill out the template we have there. Uh, if there's any bug, yeah, we can probably look into that. And uh, it's really the community behind this that makes MVVM Cross such a great framework. If you have any questions in regards to using MVVM Cross within your app, uh, not related to the framework, but the implementation, I would say, of, of the framework in your app, you can go to MVVM Cross. And we, we of the main contributors of MVVM Cross are monitoring this, uh, this MVVM Cross tag always. So you can expect us to uh, look into stuff. Let's go back to the presentation. So what I want to do now is start setting up a basic project with MVVM Cross. And I'm just going to do some live coding now, explain some stuff while we build a basic setup. Uh, let me see if I can get this on the screen. So, I've uh, Xamarin Studio here, and I'm going to start making a new solution. And in here, you can choose your template for your new project. And what I prefer doing is uh, taking cross-platform library and start off with a portable library. And uh, why not a shared project? Well, I think. Portable libraries are better and they're, they're easier to use with MVVM Cross. Uh, if you want a full explanation of the benefits of one of those, I recommend, for example, uh, reading one of the blogs that uh, Miguel de Casa put up on this recently. So let me see, what do we call this project here? Uh, we call it Xam Uni. And yeah, we're going to put it here, right? And I think we're going to go the project name dot core. But the solution we just want to call XAMUNI. So it has generated some files, but in the project, everything's going quite good now. And let's start now with adding an Android project. I'm just going over here to Android, App, and select an Android app. Next. Let's name this XAMUNI.DROID. Well, and we go for the latest and greatest. I'm just going to adjust it afterwards. and. Yeah, we're going to call this Droid and not Android because Android is used as a namespace within the Xamarin framework. So that would get us some conflicts if we named it Android. And then let's take next. And yeah, this is all good. So now we've added the Droid project. And let me just open the options here and adjust some stuff right away. And what I want to do is I want to say here the target framework is 6.0. And when I go to the application, I want to select minimum. I think we take 15 because, well, the lower ones are not really used anymore uh, as much as it was before. But uh, 15 is good for us and take 6 here as the target. Okay. So... Let's add another project. And as you already guessed, that will be an iOS project. So I'm just going to take a single view app now. And 
system uni.ios. Before we used to call it uh, .touch, but since Cameron renamed the whole framework to iOS uh, after the unified change and uh, that kind of stuff, we name it iOS now. And take next. Default options are great. And let's create it. So what I want to do now is add the MVVM framework, the MVVM cross framework to this project. And I'm just opening core now and you see here there's a folder called packages. I'm just going to add the MVVM cross packages now. So let's search here for MVVM cross. And you can see there was a lot of packages here. Uh, so there might be questions which to use. So when you're starting a project, I would say you should start off with the starter pack, which sets you up with MVVM cross uh, really quickly. So there's a deprecated one too, which uses the old namespaces. So don't install that. It's still there to enable you to update from older versions of MVVM cross. Let's take the new one here and add the starter pack. As you see, it already added some stuff for you. So you see an app class here, uh, a view model. And let's do the same thing for Android. Ah, I remembered my uh, perfect search, so I'll select the starter pack here, add it to. Yeah, it is installed. And yeah, there's the first view too on Android. And let's do the same thing for iOS. So let's select Android first as start project and see what we have here. Yeah, the main activity we need to delete, as it isn't part of the MVVM starter pack. And let's see if it runs. Oh, no. Forgot something. Yeah, so if you have created this Android project, you need to reference the core project to use that. So let's do that. Uh, I've selected it here in the references. Uh, go, go to projects and edit this core project. And here we go. Let's try and run again. Oops, it didn't run. What does it say? All right. So I should change this and now it should run. And it's still building. And here we go. So we've now launched our first uh, Android and MVVM cross project. And what you see here is a text box and a label. And yeah, let's just type something in. Hey, what does this is? Yeah, this is nice. So we already have our first binding set up. And this already works out of the, bo of the box, which is, which is, of course, great. Yeah, so cool. Let's take a look at iOS and let me see. We have to copy some stuff into the app delegate to get this working. So let's do that just now.
And we should add a reference to core 2. And let's edit the references. Select projects. Go to the core and add it. We can see now that there are some unresolved uh, things here. And by clicking on your right mouse button, on that and saying resolve, you can start using the MVVM cost platform package. And we can do the same for this one, use the core view models. And let's just select iPhone here. Select this as a starter project and press play. I probably forgot something. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, oops. Need to change this to an MVX application delegate. Yeah, so Martin, can you explain what the setup is act and the initialize is actually doing there? Like, what, what's going to happen when you call that setup and that initialize and what gets kind of wired up when that happens? Right. Great question. So what it does, it uh, actually uh, starts up or fires off the MVVM cost framework. Um, we need to have some point of where we uh, intercept the application and uh, put in our logic from MVVM cost. So that's what we're doing right here. Um, and as you can see here, we have the startup, which is in the core framework. And we can just go over there. You see it's here. Uh, we registered the first startup point in the main framework, in the core. And by doing this in the app delegate, we make sure that this is called. And if I now open the simulator here, you can see that the same uh, screen or view as Android is put in here. So if I'm just starting off typing something here, it already works too. So this is all bindings that work out of, out of the box for you. So let's take a look at how those bindings uh, look. And I'm just going to open Android first and go into resources, do layout. And this is the first view. So as you can see, the only thing we need to do here is add a new local and say MVX bind, bind the text to hello. And hello is a property on my view model. Uh, I can just open that for you now. So you see there's a string property here called hello and I'm binding this to the property here, the text view. And the same thing is for iOS. Um, Yeah, so I, if I open this, the, the code first, you can see here is the binding. And the first view is here. There's this, this label and text field in there. I'm not going to open it. It's going to take some time to do that. So I'm, I'm so, coming back to the bindings in a moment then. Hey, Martin, let me jump in for a second. So to go back to that Android um, uh, view, if you can go back there. Sure. So the MVX bind is that's not something coming from Android. That's something coming from MVVM Cross. That MVVM Cross is adding the ability to do data binding, correct? Yeah, that's right. So what MVVM Cross does, it has this uh, resource included to enable the MVX bind syntax uh, be picked up by the Android system. Uh, so you don't need to do anything for that. Um, what, what MVVM Cross does in the background is uh, add this property into the resources you see here uh, on compile time. Great. And then, uh, so can you explain again, how does the first view and the first view model know about each other? Is that just a naming convention? 
Right. I'm coming back to that in a second now. Okay. And then, so one more question then, real quick. Mm -hmm. If you can go back to the, the setup. How does the setup call the app.core? Can you review that again for us? So on iOS or Android or what are you talking? Uh, both. Both would be great. So when you, how does it know to call just the core? So we're looking at it right there. You have your setup class. Mm -hmm. So you can just quickly kind of walk through the life cycle of what's going on there. Right. Yeah, so when the setup is created, it has this uh, method here, create app, which returns the core. And because you have a reference to core in, uh, in your uh, view project, uh, you can, uh, yeah, you can just add this here. It's already added for you, uh, of course. And th this will call uh, the app uh, class on construction. So it will call this application here, which will fire off the initialize. And because we have a regist the app start here, uh, which has first view model as a parameter, we can uh, yeah we can open the first view model. And as said, yeah, how that uh, happens, uh, I will explain in a minute in my next slide. Great. So as just explained, bindings uh, are um, yeah a big thing in MVVM and of course in MVVM Cross, and it's really easy to add them. Uh, for iOS, you can uh, do as you see here, uh, make a new binding set uh, and bind, for example, a label to your title which is on the view model, uh, and apply it afterwards. Android is even easier, where you just say local MVX bind uh, text to title, and if you want to know which bindings are all available, you can go over to the mvvmcross.com website and look it up there. There's, for example, like text, click, uh, visible, all that kind of convenient uh, bindings are available. So how does mvvmcross know where to go with your views? Uh, let's say we have an app where we want to show a uh, side menu or hamburger menu, however you want to call it. And um, yeah, well, it's a different kind of presentation of your views than you usually do in straightforward navigation forward backwards in the normal platform uh, uh, structure. So that's why we have something called presenters. And presenters enable you to customize the view presentation. Um, you can do all kind of platform specific stuff uh, for every separate platform. So what you possibly could do is, for example, do a side menu on Android while you do an, uh, this, how is it called, the tab bar on iOS. Um, so you can still use the same navigation uh, when using this presenter for different platforms. And if you want to customize the presentation on one of the specific platforms, uh, then you can use presentation hints. And with this, you can give a little hint to the platform itself what to do with this navigation. Uh, an example of this could be, for example, uh, you want to clear your back stack when navigating on iOS, but you don't want to do that on Android because it has a different life cycle on Android. Uh, you can just put in a new presentation hint, clear backstack, for example, and this will come into your presenter, your custom presenter you made. You can uh, catch it in there and say, hey, if this is a clear backstack a hint, I'm just going to clear my uh, navigation backstack on iOS only. And there's lots of combinations uh, which are possible with this, this uh, presenter framework. And you can uh, think of tabs, panorama, uh, master details, and fragments on Android, of course. And we are even have a special, uh, what should I say, special class for fragments where you can really easy show and present and handle lifecycle of fragments on Android. So when we talk about plugins in MVVM Cross, there is a lot of plugins available on the standard MVVM Cross repository. But there are also many more available from other contributors. 
Uh, for example, uh, I like a plugin which is the, the Bluetooth Low Energy plugin, um, made for MVVM Cross, and it's not in the main uh, repository, but it's contributed by someone else. And that's really also the power of MVVM Cross, that there's a plugin infrastructure where you can really easily uh, add new functionality by it. So when you want to uh, use a plugin, you can just install it from NuGet and you can use it immediately. And if you want to use, uh, know how to specifically use this plugin in your view models and share, lo share logic between uh, them, you can read the documentation of every plugin in the mvvmcross.com website. And there are also samples available in the repository, the samples repository of MVVM Cross uh, organization. So if we look at one of the plugins, it's just a messenger. I think uh, this one is a really interesting one. What you can do with the messenger is, uh, yeah, provide an event aggregation between view models using weak references. And uh, you can see just a small example here. This is, for example, location view model. And uh, we have a token here. We use constructor injection to inject the messenger. And we subscribe to the location message. If I now publish this location message from another view model, it will receive this on the on location message with the message attached in it. So this really helps us to, to like communicate between view models. Normally you don't have a, a relationship between view models, but with this you can uh, pass over data between them. So, as asked before, uh, how does MVVM Cross know when I call a first view model to show uh, that it should show that kind of view that you have on the native platform? Well, there are some, some different ways, and one of them is uh, the default is convention of a configuration, which means if you have a login view, it will automatically show when you call show view model login view model. This is really easy, but it could be that you want some different name for your view model than for your view, or reuse them for, uh, you reuse the same view for different view models. So what you can do there is use generics. And I would advise to use generics because it gives you typed names, uh, which is really convenient, of course. So what you can do, for example, you see here main view uh, inherits from MVX activity and put in the name of your view model that you want to use. And you can do this, this for iOS too, just uh, use the MVX view controller and put in a generic view model after it. What you also could do is overwrite this in the setup. And by doing that, you can give in custom uh, view, view model relations. So, inversion of control in MVVM Cross. The inversion of control is a really great system to uh, share logic in your view models, but still have native implementations per platform. And what you can do uh, is, well, for example, if we take, uh, um, let's say, for example, a file system operation. You want to save, delete, uh, read uh, from your file system on the native device. Uh, that's different on iOS, Android, and Windows. So all this pl these platforms have different Im implementations. What we then do is uh, create an interface for this to, for example, save a file and implement this per platform as uh, inter um, implement this interface per platform. And you can just use this within your view models as mvx.resolve, as you can see here and all the functionality of this native platform interface will be available inside your view model. Uh, you can also re register this as a singleton, as a lazy singleton, or as a dynamic type. So when using interfaces, 
You can also use this with MVVM process and dependency injection. And when we have this example here, you see that we can uh, inject the MVX decision converter and even more and do stuff with, in, with it inside our view model. And it's really easy to use because MVVM process has built in all this kind of stuff. So let's look at the sample of this. So what I have here is the X platform menus sample from the samples repository of MVVM cross. And I'm just going to run it first here on iOS. Let's see how it looks like. We have a login page here. Uh, well, it already has filled in the use and the password. And I'm just going to put press login here. And what we see here is a home view with this hamburger menu on the top left. And I'm just going to press this, and well, it's really nice, and yeah, it works quite, quite good, I think. So this is a sample of MVVM cross hamburger implementation, and let's just start it on Android 2 to see how that looks like. So now I'm logged in, and as you can see, the same site menu and the same navigation is available on both platforms. So what I want to do is uh, take a look at the logic behind it in the core package. So if we go in here and look, for example, first at the login view model, we can see that we inject the login servers in here. And we have some properties, username, password, which are all bind to the login view model, to the, to the view attached to it. Uh, we have a login command, which is going to yeah, do the actual login uh, action. And what we can see here, if we do an attempt to log in, it will actually use the, view, uh, the service that we injected, the login service, to do a login. And if it's um, yeah, if it's uh, true that it can log in, it will show the main view model. If it can't, it will show an alert. So this is how we, for example, do a login on uh, the MVVM crossway. So let's also take a look at the App Start class. Because when dealing with login, you probably want to remember what you uh, what, what your user put in and uh, log in automatically for him the next time he opens the app. So if you look at the app start here, you can see the the app services uh, the login service is injected again. And when the app is started here, you can see that we try to do another login. It already has remembered to log in on the file system, so we don't need to pass it in. And we can show the main view model or the login view model if it's uh, not already logged in. So I would really uh, encourage you to check out the sample in the MVVM cross samples repository and um, yeah, to really understand how this is uh, going on. So. What you already saw in the sample that I just uh, showed you of the Android app is that we have support for material design slash app compat within MVVM Cross. So we have uh, special classes available for all kind of uh, support libraries. And one of the cool things is the MVX caching fragmented activity, which, uh, as I mentioned before, 
it uh, handles the whole life cycle of fragments within your app. Now, if you need to manually uh, handle your fragments, it can be a lot of pain to handle, like uh, um, yeah, going to the background, rotating your screen, all this kind of life cycle stuff that Android is doing. We also have support for the other Android support libraries, uh, but it might not be so obvious to, to see that. Um, for example, if we talk, take the card view library, uh, the card view itself is based on an image view on Android. And we already have support for bindings on the image view, so we don't need to specifically add support for card view. So this is based on inheritance, and it works really great for the, for the libraries here. So when you say MVVM cross, does it enable testing? Of course we do. Uh, we have support for IOC on testing uh, out of the box. So this is really great from building a complete app with uh, testing with the whole life cycle in it. And uh, I would encourage you to use this. And there are some samples available too. So you should probably check them out in the samples repository. So some tips before we uh, go to the questions is I want to say that you really should try to keep things simple. If you want to over-design your whole app, you probably get into yeah, kind of a mess with all kind of services, kind of injections. So really try to keep it simple, separate concerns, and uh, yeah, don't try to invent the wheel again. So please take a look at the samples, uh, take a look at all the the GitHub and uh, Stack Overflow uh, topics, and ask, ask us questions if you uh, are stuck somewhere. And also use the analysis plugin uh, for MVVM Cross to avoid the common mistakes you might make. So if you want to know more about MVVM Cross specifically, yeah, the first place to go for live support or live chat is the Xamarin chat channel on Slack. We have our own channel within the Xamarin chat called MVVM Cross, and I would encourage you to join there and join the discussions, join for help and ask questions. We also have a LinkedIn group where you can, uh, yeah, you can see who are um, involved into MVVM Cross, and we are on Twitter. If you just follow MVVM Cross, uh, you'll get updated about uh, updates on the framework, on uh, events we're doing. And one last thing is that it's really good for you if you contribute on GitHub. You could start off with contributing by filling in some issues, um, but it would be great if you get in some pull requests. And what we're doing is that we are very actively involved into reviewing those pull requests. So um, yeah, we really take it seriously to uh, be involved in the community. So this was my presentation on MVVM Cross. I can imagine that there are a lot of questions. I see that there are some questions here on the left, and I can probably go through them some now. Yeah, so how about I just, sorry, uh, how about I ask them? I'll read them out and you can answer them. So some of them I've had uh, chats, but I've left the questions here so we could address them here at the end. All right, so let me just jump in here. Uh, one of them is uh, what you were showing is just similar to standard MVVM dependency property declar declaration. So how is MVVM cross different from a just more generic approach for dependency properties? Anything different? I don't think it's really different. It's just that it's really easy to use because everything is already done for you. Right, and uh, again, iOS and Android don't have this data binding and dependency type stuff uh, built in either, so we have that, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple questions on Xamarin Forms and MVVM Cross. So we don't have time right now, I guess, to show uh, an actual sample of that, but can you talk to what's the status of it? Is it still experimental? Is it now part of the main MVVM cross? 
Yeah, what I can do is just open uh, the MVVM cross repository here. And if I press up here, you see this is the MVVM cross organization. And um, there are uh, some repositories in here. This is the main repository. We have forms here, plugins, Android support. All are in here, and the samples too. So if I go to forms and take a look here, you can see that we actively work on this. Uh, the last uh, commit was, what, what is it, three days ago. Well, it was just a template, but anyways. Um, so there are some samples here, which you might want to check out. Um, there are samples in C-sharp, samples in XAML, and um, yeah, I think it's in a very good shape. Uh, we could probably use some, uh, some, some, some more things there. But for the most usage cases, it's really useful. Okay. Do you know of any any gotchas, any you know pitfalls or anything when using Xamarin Forms with MVVM Cross? Anything people should be aware of, or any anything that's going to get in their way? Uh, I'm not really sure of any pitfalls right now. Um, I think one of the great things what we can do with a custom presenter. Um, in MVVM Cross is that you can use Xamarin Forms and Xamarin Native in the same application. So what we can do is we can uh, add a couple of views uh, in Xamarin Forms, um, just share the, the, the view code in there, and there might be some specific screens that you want native, and you can add those screens in, uh, in MVVM Cross and make the presenter know what screen is native and what screen is Forms. So this this uh, enables you to like mix the mix your setup, which is nice. Um, do you know is I think I could probably answer this too, but is MVVM Cross compatible with the Xamarin Forms dependency service? And so the dependency service is more of a service locator than a dependency injection container. But mm -hmm. do you have anything to add to that? I mean, you should be able to use both of them at the same time if you wanted to, but. Um, yeah, I would say so too. Uh, you could use both at the same time, um, but like in general, I would uh, specific specifically with forms. I would use MVVM Cross, for example, for the view model navigation, uh, for the dependency injection. Uh, but yeah, as I said before, you can just mix and match where you need to. Right, because the like I said, the, the dependency service is really just a simple service locator. So it right. doesn't do nearly as much as the MVVM cross IOC. So you can still right. use it, but, and then the MVVM cross IOC can act as a service locator as well anyway, and a dependency injection container. So right. they're not gonna conflict, but really if you're gonna be going with MVVM cross, you should probably just use the MVVM cross one. Yeah, I think that's a good advice. Um, let's see. So a couple questions about the recent uh, huge update from MVVM Cross 3, 3.5 to the new MVVM Cross 4. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, number one, what are the main differences between 3, 3 and 4? You know, there's some namespace, but are there any pain points when you're upgrading? And what's also the biggest change in functionality between the two? So. Okay, so so the the first thing I would like to say is that we made a great blog post about the MVVM Cross 4.0 uh, release, and uh, if you want to know all details, you should probably read that one. But the biggest change would probably be the namespaces. Uh, we've restructured the whole uh, MVVM Cross uh, setup, uh, so it is more easy and convenient to use it. And when you are upgrading from, for example, 3.5 to for the uh, you're probably gonna have to, um, yeah, for example, use some tool like Resharper to get all your namespaces updated correctly, or do it manually if you want to. But other than that, um, there has been um, a lot of refactoring. We have support for C# -sharp 6, and we've uh, converted all functionality that can be converted to C# -sharp 6 uh, to it already. Uh, so. It's really for speed and readability and uh, using the latest and greatest. And that's great, I think. And also another change is that we have worked on, uh, on the NuGet support. So we have support for NuGet 3.0 now. 
Um, it's backwards compatible to 2.8.7. Um, and why not lower? Well, that's because from 2.8.7, they added support for different dependencies on the NuGet packages. So with that, we can have different dependencies on Android and iOS if we need to, uh, which we already do for some situations. Okay. And in the comments, we have one vote in favor of the Hot Tuna namespace and one vote against it. So it's a pretty even. <laughs> <laughs> One vote. Um, a couple questions about uh, the life cycle. So, uh, what's the life cycle of a view model? More specifically, how does it get disposed? And then, while you're talking about that, also, what happens to the view model and the bindings when the app moves to the background? Do you have to save the view model data in the state? So, what's the life cycle like there for both disposal and backgrounding? Um, that's kind of hard to answer because it also depends on the platform you're using. So, for example, if you're using Android and using fragments without any caching, uh, your fragment and view model are probably going to be disposed when going to the background. Um, so it's also something you need to handle within the platform itself. And in general, MVM Cross tries to cache and um, rerun the life cycle for all view models uh, in, in, in all kinds of situations. So it should all be handled, but you still need some knowledge of the specific platform to be sure. OK. A um, couple questions about maybe just pointing to resources. So we already saw the MVV and Cross website, and that's a great place to start. Do you happen to know any good examples of Number one, custom presenters. So I saw Greg Shackles has a great blog post about there using MVVM Cross with custom presenters. But are there anything else you think we should point out? Sure, yeah. So Greg Shackles has a really great blog about it. He has written several blog posts about the custom presenters. But if you look at the samples repository of the MVVM Cross uh, organization, you can see, for example, here the X platform menus, which I showed earlier, which has a custom presenter for iOS and Android. Actually, it is kind of built in into MVVM Cross. Um, but if I just take a look here and mm, let me just check here where it is. Yeah, so this is a custom presenter in here for the JA side panels uh, package. And I can just open it. And the main thing what you see here is that uh, the custom presenter inherits from the MVX iOS view presenter. And this um, has some methods that you can implement yourself. And if you look at the show method here, which is the most important one, it will show your uh, view controller. You can see that there's some log logic here going on. And we're using some attributes. So I would recommend looking into this sample. Uh, and of course, asking on Slack will also help. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who already created presenters for uh, custom situations, and they can probably help you if you uh, need something. Great, and I put the link to Greg's blog post in the chat window. Would you mind clicking on that for me, Martin, just so we can see it on the screen? So this would probably yeah. be a good place to start as well. He does a pretty good uh, job of explaining what they are and why you'd want to use them, things like that. So that's in the, the chat window. It's now on the recording as well, so everybody can see that. Uh, for another question related to samples and resources. Do you have any uh, particular samples you'd point out for binding view models to fragments in Android? Uh, yes, that's again the, um, the sample I just showed, the, the X platform menus. If I just go to the Android project here and look at the fragments. So let's take, for example, the menu fragment in here. What you can see is that we added an attribute to the fragments, which uh, points out uh, as first parameter what the, the host of this fragment is. So in this case, the main view model, it's attached, attached to an activity which will automatically load when showing this fragment here. And it will show inside the navigation frame, which is the second parameter. And uh, how does it know that this fragment is the menu? 
Well, as you can see here, this is the generic fragment, uh, which has a MV uh, menu view model as generic. Great. So, again, as with a lot of things, Greg also has a blog post about that, so I just put that into the chat window, if you wouldn't mind uh, clicking that. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, another great one there. I put that in the chat window, and then... I wanted to point out here, if you click the next link there for me, Martin, is years ago, like three years ago, Stuart put together these videos of these N plus one, and they're a little bit out of date. The namespaces have changed, but a lot of the core concepts are still the same. And when I was first learning MVVM Cross, these videos were a huge, huge help to me. So I would suggest people go through these as well, understanding that they are, of course, for a much earlier version of MVVM Cross, but a lot of the things that you uh, you might learn would still be applicable today. Uh, so the N plus one videos, I think, are, are a great resource as well. And there's one about Android fragments there too. Yes, that's right. Um, so which which is a good segue to another question we had is not a technical question, but is Stuart still involved with MVVM Cross, or has he completely stepped away? Well, he is still involved, but just in the background. So the main guys behind MVM Cross uh, right now is me and Cheese Baron. Uh, so we're running the project, and uh, Stuart is helping us with advice about which direction we uh, should go technically. And he's uh, sometimes uh, also contributing with pull requests and comments uh, into the issues. But at a background level. Good. Um, let's see. Also, another... A question that we we hear a lot, I hear a lot about in Xamarin University is, do we have any examples of really complex real world applications with you know lots of screens, events, navigation, you know a really complex app? Are there any good examples of that that we can see the source code to and all that? Not just simple samples, but more complex. Right, good question, and uh, you can look into the samples repository here. There are quite some samples uh, here. Uh, some are not updated yet, which is in the old samples repository. So they are slightly outdated. But the ones in here, there are some uh, which are quite advanced. You just need to look into them a little bit more, I think, because uh, it might not be that obvious that it's uh, an extensive sample. And if you want just some overview of a, gen a general app, you can also, for example, for, I, uh, for Android, you can look into the Android support repository. There are some samples here. And this one has uh, quite some screens. If I just look at the fragments, uh, like 10 or something, uh, it uses uh, all kind of UI elements you want to use in your app, like a view page here, uh, a menu, all that kind of stuff is in here. So okay. that that's already available, but uh, if you want, like, um, uh, yeah, what should I say, an enterprise app, well, that's uh, probably a little bit harder because we make those apps, uh, of course, for enterprises, but, um, yeah, we, we can't give away the source code of it. Yeah, and, of course, we can also, you know, just go to GitHub and search for MVVM Cross and look through... Uh, basically all of GitHub, and I'm sure there's probably somebody out there that has something uh, more extensive as well that we just don't know about. Right. And another... Oh, uh, Matt, Matt Wilhelm says, the Twitter app example is helpful, and the collectible are both uh, helpful in his opinion, so that's good to know. Another resource question, are, do you know of any good examples of using... MVVM Cross with Xamarin Forms and Native together. Do we have a good example of doing that? Um, yeah, so I'm not sure where to find it. Um, I think this was, yeah, there's some sample of it by Michael Ritland, I think. Uh, which we also made a blog post about it. Um, I don't know if someone can find it. But uh, I'm sure it's made by Marco Ritland, and uh, he has a sample and blog post. Okay. And another one along the same lines. Do you know of any 
great, great apps in any store that have been developed with MVVM Cross. So real consumer apps in any of the stores. Um, that's a difficult question. Uh, of course, we have all the apps we made uh, we made with our company, but uh, probably uh, one that's familiar to uh, some people is the ones that are um, made by Olo, uh, where Greg Shackles also works. Um, they made some uh, some big apps with MVVM Cross. That's the one I was going to suggest as well. Uh, so Olo creates basically restaurant ordering apps. And there's uh, lots of good ones there, too. Yeah, so here I have the blog post of Michael Redland. And uh, it describes how to mix MVVM Cross Native View with uh, Xamarin Forms pages. Uh, so we got some uh, some people. So DDP Yoga Now, Cinema, Cinemark app for both iOS and Android, both, uh, I guess, MVVM cross apps, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, if people know more apps, they can also um, add it to the website. Uh, I think we have a section on the documentation. Um, where is it? I'm not sure where this. It is somewhere. You can probably find it. But we have a section uh, where you can see uh, which uh, apps we uh, already made with MVVM Cross. Great. Uh, another question. Can you use only the binding part of MVVM uh, without, or MVVM Cross, without the navigation or the IOC? Um, no, that, that's not possible. Uh, that part of the framework is uh, yeah tied uh, together a bit, so um, I wouldn't recommend that either on trying. All right, uh, let's see. Here's a, a question that I can kind of answer at the beginning. Are there any modules or plugins that support MySQL for data access? So I would point out this would limit you to basically only desktop apps, right, because MySQL, not SQLite, but MySQL would not obviously run on iOS or Android or Windows Phone or anything like that. So you'd be out of the box, you'd be limiting yourself just to basically UWP apps. Uh, and MVM Cross supports uh, Xamarin Mac, right? Yes. Yeah, so so Mac, Mac desktop apps and uh, Windows desktop apps. And I don't think there's a plugin for that. You'd have to write your own plugin if I'm i uh, not mistaken, right? Right. And But as you can see here on the screen, it does support SQLite. SQLite is a database that runs on all platforms, iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, uh, all over the place. So that's the one that's supported out of the box. Yeah, so if you want to use any SQL, then uh, I would recommend using the SQLite uh, plugin. All right, so here's a, a bit of a loaded question, but to be fair, we did ask Laurent about the same thing. Uh, somebody's been using M MVVM Lite. How would you say MVVM Cross compares to MVVM Lite? And again, we asked him the same question, so turnabout is fair play. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't know. Um, it's two great frameworks, I think, and... Um, it probably also depends a bit on uh, on your preferred uh, yeah what you prefer as framework, but I think um, MVVM Cross has, uh, has especially a bigger and more involved community, uh, so that really helps you uh, to build your app. Um, and if it if it has a bigger community, you probably also get more updates and uh, more content spread throughout the web. So I think. That's one of the biggest uh, advantages. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, uh, Laurent's answer was along the lines of MVM Lite is meant to be just that. It's meant to be small and light, which means it doesn't have nearly as much functionality as MVVM Cross. There's lots of stuff that go with MVVM Cross as well. So there's, yeah, there's a, there's a balance there, too. Uh, I, I would I would say that's not totally true because MVVM Cross is based on all separate uh, NuGet packages, so you well, can just install whatever you want and you don't need everything. Well, I don't, I'm not saying that you have to take everything. I'm saying that you have the option of a lot more functionality with MVVM Cross than you do with MVVM Lite. 
There is right. a, yep. there's a ceiling to MVVM light intentionally. Right. It's Laurent's uh, design for that. All right, and uh, one more. Let's see. Is it possible to enable fast scrolling in a list view? I would assume so. That's a UI type thing. So anything. Yeah. That would... So fast scrolling is something that is part of the native platform. Uh, so there's nothing limiting it uh, inside MVVM Cross. And if you're using Android, uh, you can uh, also use the Recycle View, which we have bindings for in uh, MVVM Cross. So it's really easy and convenient to use the Recycle View uh, for yeah, fast scrolling, uh, high performance lists. All right, uh, another one just came in. Uh, I once had a problem with linking my Android app using MVVM Cross. It was complaining of the plugins. How would you solve that? Um, so I assume this is the linker is stripping things out. Is I'm I'm guessing what uh, you're talking right. about. And, so I can just yep, go ahead. put up the, the the project here, and what you see is that when uh, when you add the MVVM Cross framework. There's this linker please include added to it. And um, you can just add your custom uh, code, which is linked away uh, to this file. And yeah, it will basically help you uh, solve the linker problems. Great. And for more generic solution of anytime the linker is stripping something out, we have our XAM 220 class, which is our publishing class. And we go over there for about five or 10 minutes on how we can tell the linker to ignore our code and to leave it in. And there's multiple different ways you can control the linker uh, in that way. And we, we give you a nice strategy of how you can do that. So that is uh, another way too. If, if the linker please include isn't working, you can go through that also. Uh, Matt also put this up. so. I just put a link in the chat window again. Uh, that's the way he goes through and works with the linker uh, as well. Right. If you mind clicking that so we can see that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so this is uh, what we kind of talk about in the XAM 220 of how we can control that linker and make sure stuff stays in there. Mm-hmm. All right, so excellent questions, everyone. Oh, wait, one more. Uh, let's see, we're going to be finishing up here. Uh, would you use MVVM Cross for any kind of app, like an enterprise app or a one-page only app? Yeah, great question. Um, me, myself, I, I would personally use it in any app. Uh, that's probably also because I'm so experienced uh, in using it. Uh, but it might be a little bit overkill to use it in a one-page only app. Um, but I would say for enterprise, you definitely should use MVVM Cross, uh, especially because it enables you to really build these professional apps in a structured uh, manner. All right. Well, thank you. And I don't think we have any more. So, you know, we've been we've been going for about an hour and 15 minutes. If there's any other questions, let me know now. Otherwise, we're going to finish up. I want to say thank you once again, Martin. Loved having you here. Loved learning about MVVM Cross. And you have all your contact information there. So get involved, yes. everyone. Contact uh, Martin. Get involved in the Slack channel if you need to or if you want to. Hang out there. Lots of great participation. And uh, this, this recording, we are recording the session. This will be up uh, relatively soon, hopefully next week or so. We'll get that up. And remember that uh, Martin will be speaking at Evolve. So if you haven't gotten your Evolve tickets, go ahead and do that. We also won't have a guest lecture next month in April because we have Evolve and we have lots of stuff going on that month. But come back. If you have any ideas as well for anybody you'd like to see as a guest lecture, let me know. Uh, again, you can just find me at Xamarin University. I am Rob. But... Thank you again, Martin, and thank you everyone for attending and for the questions and the participation. Really fantastic. And I hope everybody has a great day. 
Yeah, have a great day. Uh, I was uh, really happy to be here, and uh, I hope to see you again on uh, Slack or uh, on the other communication channels. Thank <music> you.